Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at a Husqvarna 450 chainsaw and we're going to address the complaint that there is fuel coming out of the muffler. Now this problem can occur with any model of chainsaw, string trimmer, blower, or whatever. Um, the customer obviously has a flooded situation whether it was their starting procedure or a mechanical problem is what we're going to dig into here. So I'm going to take a look inside. That spark plug is really wet. We're going to take a look inside the cylinder and see if we can see that it's flooded or not. Cripes! Yeah, let's take a closer look here. Yeah, that was a lot of fuel. And I think that what I'm going to find, if I would have kept pulling on that rope, it would have just kept pumping fuel out. But we'll dig deeper into this carburetor and try and pinpoint the problem. It could be uh, the needle valve is worn or has a piece of debris caught underneath it. It could be the metering diaphragm is stiff and just holding the metering lever down and holding the needle open. Or it could be some other mechanical problem with the carburetor that's letting fuel flow through it. So we're going to take our air box off the carburetor and try and get this carburetor off of here. Before I start unhooking fuel lines though I want to make sure I dump the fuel out of the tank or I'm going to have a bigger mess. I already got a small fire hazard going on in that towel there so. That old filter was due to be replaced anyway so we'll get uh, a fresh one on there. And I pressure tested this line while I had it out. I just cut that part out of the video. So we're going to pop the fuel line off the carburetor. There we go. The throttle linkage is going to have to come off along with the other fuel line. And on this carburetor, the impulse is uh, actually a fitting built onto the carburetor. There's no separate hose. So we've harvested our carburetor. Cripes! And we're going to kind of... Uh, we're not going to show the whole carb rebuild on this. We're just going to show you the highlights here, what you need to see. Look at the acrobat there with the screwdriver. Stripes! Well, there's your problem, it's all dirty. Well, I think we found our problem. Stiff metering diaphragm. It's not an unusual problem. Ah, oh, that's right. South side borrowed my can of carb clean. Never returned it, replaced it, or nothing. Yeah, you know, guys come grab stuff off your bench and then leave you hanging. What are you going to do? <laughs> so, I put a new metering diaphragm. And actually, I put a whole new carb kit in here. New needle. Um, 
pump diaphragm gaskets. We can call that a rebuild, I suppose. And we're Where's gonna put it back skull? together and hopefully the thing's gonna run. There's still four minutes left in this video, so maybe it'll run, maybe it won't. We're gonna pop our last fuel line on here. And then get our air filter holder back in place. So I'm speeding this up a little bit. But one thing I want you to remember is that these four screws that are holding this on here and holding the carburetor on, they're just going into plastic. So you can see that, you know, I did the final torque by hand. Then we do a little function check and make sure that the throttle linkage is working properly and that the choke linkage is working properly and that the fast idle and the kick down with the trigger they're all working properly before we try and start it. New spark plugs are pretty consistently gapped correctly but a lot of times I'll check them and like in this video, once in a while, I'll even grab the torque wrench and uh, crank down the spark plug. 50-50, whether I'm going to use a torque wrench or not. It really makes no sense, but whatever. So we're going to put the top cover back on and we got to put some go-go juice back in it, special sauce we're calling it, and we'll check the bar oil. And we're going to have to prime it. Now this thing after a carb rebuild, it should fire right up three or four poles. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That ain't no good. If they don't start by ten poles, I quit. So, ain't no good at all. what's the problem? Well, if you were following along, you may have noticed that um, I had a pretty flooded saw when I had it upside down and I was pulling on the cord and I never actually uh, cleared that condition before I rebuilt the carbon and put it back together so here I'm just gonna blow the uh, excess fuel out and then we'll retry it again so was, that one was on me for not clearing the flooded condition before I started you know I threw it on choke and and pulled it ten times and it just flooded it worse. So let's put this back together and uh, see if she'll run. And it will. Thanks for watching. Later.